Welcome, Melvin. Hi. Hi. Um, so I understand this is your first time at our center, right? Yeah, my partner told me to come here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I noticed that on your form. Okay, so we can talk a bit more about that later. Um, I was just wondering, uh, before we get started, I want to explain to you a little bit about what I do and about some of my responsibilities, if that's okay. Um, but before I even do that, I was wondering if you had any questions coming into this, or if you're just wondering about anything in particular before we get started. Not really. I think I, I should be good. Okay, great. So, uh, and I promise this will be the longest you'll hear me talk without me kind of passing it back to you, okay? okay. Um, so really briefly, I'm in my role here, uh, I see it as just being a listener, okay? So my, my, my big job, regardless of why you came here today, is to listen to you. And I want to get what's going on with your life, okay? Um, however much of that you want to tell me, and in fact, if you don't want to tell me anything at all, that's cool too. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm guessing that there's a reason why you're here today, even if that reason, like you told me at the beginning, is not so much you wanting to come here by yourself. Um, so regardless of why you're here, I just want to listen, okay? Um, the second part of my job, with your permission, is to give you some feedback on some things, okay? Um, now you'll see kind of how this goes along as we speak to each other, um, but really my job is ultimately just to listen and with your permission, uh, to figure out um, where we might go with some of the stuff you're telling me about, okay? okay? And it might have nothing to do with why you said your girlfriend, right? Right. Um, with why your girlfriend wanted you to come here, okay? Um, and speaking of which, I just want to start as much as possible with a clean slate, okay? Right. I'm not going to assume anything about what she told me um, or what you're going to say that she told you or why or whatever else. Uh, I really want to hear about things from your perspective, okay? So, how is that sitting with you? Any questions at all about that? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay. I think I understand what's the basic. Perfect, okay. Um, so, with that out of the way, just really quickly, some of my responsibilities um, as a counselor, um, really these responsibilities are all built around kind of ensuring not only your protection, but the protection of other people. Okay, um, especially people who are close to you in your life. Okay, um, just really quickly, Alvin, what's your understanding of confidentiality? You know what that is? Uh, well, from what I've learned is mostly, basically, nothing can't be, basically, nothing can't be said or talked about mm. as long as you're in this area. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the basic idea. Whatever we talk about stays between us. Mm -hmm. Specifically, it's got to stay up here. Okay, or in my case notes, which are protected and you have access to them at any time, okay? Um, now my responsibility, in addition to confidentiality, is knowing when I have to bend or break confidentiality. Now there are only four reasons, Alvin, that I'd ever have to do that, okay? okay? And in each one of those cases, you'd be the first person that I would have to tell about this, okay? I have to just let you know, look, based on what we've been talking about, I'm gonna to have to tell another person about this, okay? Now the first reason has the most to do with your own protection, okay? Now this would have to do with you telling me or giving me any reason to believe that you're at risk for harming either yourself or another person, right? Whether that person's close to you or otherwise, in the immediate future. So you can't just tell me, for example, you know what, I'd like to punch my boss in the face. Who wouldn't, in a way, right? Um, now. That's not an immediate threat to me. Of course, I'd like to ask you some questions about that, if that's something that you would say. But it would have to be an immediate statement about harm that you would want to commit against someone or yourself, okay? Um, the second reason also involves protection, but this time it's a specific kind of person, a specific age. Now, I'm a child in Ontario. Is anyone 16 or younger? So if anything that you tell me uh, gives me reason to think that a child Again, someone 16 or under is at risk of any kind of severe mistreatment. That can be abuse or neglect or what have you. Um, and whether that's someone that you know or whether you're the person inflicting it or you just know about it, that's also a case where I'd have to um, either speak to the Children's Aid Society or any other relevant authority, okay? Uh, and the last major case often that I'd have to bend or break confidentiality is the most rare, to be honest, okay? okay? This would probably not apply to you. In fact, it applies in almost none of the cases that I work in. This is when the courts 
order me to give information. It's called a subpoena, right? right. I don't imagine this is going to apply for us, um, especially having glanced at your intake form. I, I, I don't foresee any major issues there, okay? But that's just for you to know, okay? Um, the courts might, in some cases, ask me to provide information to them. And in that case, I would still give you the heads up, okay? Right. Now, does all of that kind of make sense to you, or do you have any questions about how confidentiality works for us? No, it makes sense. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect, okay. And by the way, uh, that's not the last time you can ask questions about any of that, okay? Yeah. If ever you're kind of confused about confidentiality or like, oh no, should I really tell Carl that? Mm -hmm. Or um, should, I, should I maybe hold back? Absolutely feel free to ask me if it's something that might trespass on the limits of confidentiality, okay? Okay. Perfect. And like I said, that's the longest you'll hear me speak without pausing, all right? All right. Um, so I'd like to hear in your own words, Alvin, if you don't mind, Regardless of why you're here today, what do you think brings you in? Well, honestly, I have no problem. I think my girlfriend's just a little bit uh, overprotective. Mm. She's saying that I smoke way too many weed and playing video games, mm -hmm. in which I don't. Uh, I mean, yeah, I smoke weed because, like, well, I'm really, I'm just stressed out. I'm a little bit angry. I have to repeat my schooling again. Mm -hmm. I failed two classes, but you know it's he. She doesn't understand it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm hearing that you're definitely here today um, for a problem that's coming mainly from your girlfriend, at least from from her perspective, mm -hmm. right? So she sees an issue with your gaming, right? Um, although at the same time, I'm also hearing that you're recognizing. Some other issues in your life, we don't know yet whether they're related to the gaming, right? Mm -hmm. So I heard something around school and having to repeat, was it your second year or something like that? Yeah, like pretty much like it's just been a, a little bit uh, stressful, um, like the professors are like giving me a hard time and honestly, I just didn't feel like going to school last year. Mm. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of people are supporting you, it seems. No, and I, and I don't even like the program. And my girlfriend's been pushing me to, hey, Alvin, you gotta finish your program. Mm. And you gotta, uh, are you going to school and all that stuff? And like, honestly, I just ignore it. So you're feeling pressured and kind of overwhelmed from all sides, not just personally from your girlfriend, but yeah. professionally too from school. Yeah. Mm. So how is that sitting with you, getting that pressure? And um, honestly, I just like when I feel pressured, maybe I might smoke smoke a joint and mm. just like help my, myself relax. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my buddy you, uh, usually comes over. We play video games and smoke a joint, and I think that's about it. Okay. Okay. So. It sounds like all this pressure that's coming to you has to find a release, right? And in your life, one of the ways that you find release, not the only one it seems like, but one of the ways you find release to, just to relax and unwind is to smoke up a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and also to play some video games, okay? Um, can you tell me a little bit more about kind of what both of those look like, starting with whichever one you want, either the gaming or the, the smoking? Uh, see, <laughs> sorry. Well, when I smoke weed, I feel like there's nothing uh, stress about it. I can like use my imagination and like get out of the real world. Mm. Same goes with uh, video games. Like, I mean, even even if I don't have my buddy coming over, I'm just playing some games. Like, just helps me to get out of reality yeah. and just. For one second, like I just want to be someone other than me, mm. and yeah, like I don't really confine in my girlfriend a lot, but like she doesn't understand it, and she's blaming me for our relationship. But in reality, I haven't. Like, what would, what does she want? Like, I she's angry at me, but like. You know, it's just, 
she just wants to blame it on me smoking weed and like playing video games when reality strikes that I just don't even know what I want to do in life. Um, there's a lot going on there, right? So one huge part of this is just wanting to get outside of yourself every so often. Mm -hmm. And understandably, to be honest, I mean, you've been telling me about feeling pressured and overwhelmed and people telling you to do this and that and the other thing. Um, just wanting to step outside of yourself and kind of just chill out every so often, right? Um, and also, I'm hearing a lot that you really value your autonomy, right? Just being able to make up your own damn mind about what you want to do, right? Right? How you want to spend your day, right? Um, especially when you don't see anything really harming you, right? right? Even if your girlfriend sees it differently, right? It also sounds like you're open-minded about that too. At bottom, it seems like as long as something isn't really harming you or really bringing you down, you should be free to do whatever you want. Does that kind of make sense for you, Al? Um, honestly, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just kind of feels like people are telling me what to do, but in reality, they don't, they don't know what they want. Yeah. What, they don't know what I want in life. And my girlfriend, I kind of feel like she wants to control me, wants to change me, and it's just so annoying and like yeah like i really don't even have a problem smoking weed like yeah mm. i smoke it often but it's mostly when i feel stressed and like i just don't want to be around anyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so someone trying to change you is a big problem for you yes because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you want to be yourself and you want to make your own decisions right okay um, and so I'm sensing or at least I'm going to assume you can correct me if I'm okay. wrong um, uh, is this sort of thing happening in other areas of your relationship with your girlfriend <sighs> yeah I mean there were times where you know like uh, we had an argument and like instead of me going like I wanted to smoke a joint but like she threw them all out because she found out mm. I left the house and you know and just I guess she doesn't know it but I kind of slept with her best friend mm. okay and when was that Alvin? pardon? you slept with her best friend? yeah and when did that happen? Ah, uh, it's like say around October. Okay. Okay. And how are you feeling about that and how it happened? I feel guilty. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Okay. But at the same time, it just felt, I don't know, for once, it just felt like I made the decision. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's it was the wrong decision and I blame myself, but yeah. it was my own decision. It wasn't my parents. It wasn't her decision mm -hmm. it was mine mm -hmm. and like I met I was under like I took the wheel and like I chose it mm -hmm. well for one thing Alvin it takes a hell of a lot of courage to admit something like that to someone you just met I maybe mean, just been talking for less than 15 minutes and I'm, I'm really honored that you shared something like that with me uh, and I'm also really impressed by the way that you've got the insight to see that while on the one hand, right, um, that was absolutely an expression of your autonomy, right? Like your own free will, like you were in the driver's seat, as you said, right? At the same time, you recognize that that was really hurtful to another person. And that's not an easy thing to admit when we do things that are, you know, harmful to another person. Mm -hmm. um, so how has that been sitting with you guys in your relationship? Uh, honestly. I haven't really talked about it mm -hmm. most of the time. When we lash out, I there are times where I'm about to say it, but I choose not to, and and then I just basically let it go and decide to just go mm -hmm. downstairs in the basement and like just smoke. Yeah. To be on your own again. Yeah. 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 So I'm sensing, and again, correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong. Um, 
communication probably isn't at a hundred percent for you guys right now. Not just with respect to the thing involving her best friend, but I'm sensing that communication in general might be tense. It has. I mean, honestly, it's just more of like I just don't know what to do in life, and mm. I I guess you can say we were high school sweethearts, and. Us moving together was, in my most opinion, would be my biggest regret. But also, I don't think it's the best uh, healthy relationship right now. And mm. most of it is me spent like I choose to spend my day uh, not being with her or showing yeah. her affection. Mostly, I choose to play video games and, you know, smoke some joint. Yeah. So things moved really fast for you guys. It sounds like you guys fell in love really fast. You had that awesome honeymoon stage. You became sweethearts. Maybe you made some decisions, like life decisions that were a little fast, but it sounds like you guys are still in love with each other. And you've kind of hit some roadblocks and... Part of how you've been dealing with these roadblocks, right, the pressure and feeling overwhelmed and the communication, is you've been kind of retreating into your own space, right? And part of that space involves the world of the gaming, right? Uh, does that kind of make sense, by the way? Am I, am I jumping too far ahead? I guess so. I, I, I yeah. guess I think, honestly, I don't know what to do right now, and like, just playing video games helps me relax and get away with all the problems that I have right now. Hmm. I mean, like I've I'm pressured to find a go back to school, and like it just it's very hard because I don't even know what I want to do in school, hmm. and like I'm being told by my parents, my girlfriend, to find a program that can. That I can be done within less than within two years yeah. at a stable job, and it's just too much. And like there, and while I'm at it, like it just I realize I'm like I've been uh, so stressful that I started eating late at night, and mm. like when like yeah, just just stressful, you know. So more pressure, more stress, and you're noticing that it's spilling over, not just into the gaming and, you know, and smoking, but other things are showing up. And again, I really want to commend you, Alvin, for making that connection, right? Because not everyone, even if they can kind of feel or like sense a connection between, you know, feeling stressed out or feeling pressured and then doing something that they kind of regret, not everyone's going to voice it out loud. So it takes a lot of courage, not just for you to say it to anyone, you could have told any one of your buddies, but to tell it to someone like me that you just met, that takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of insight. So I really wanted you to know that I appreciate that. Um, so one big thing I was wondering about, Alvin, um, is you had mentioned what everyone else wants you to do, right? Now, Alvin, you got to make up your mind. What do you want to do in school? What do you want to do for your career? Again, that sounds like more pressure. Even if they're letting you make the choice, mm -hmm. right? If you can, just imagine you can just silence all those voices for a second. What is it that you want to do? Like, I don't know. Like, as of right now, I really don't want to go back to school. I, mm -hmm. I, I just want to work for a bit, you know, and like explore. Yeah. Uh, the options, it's just, I guess, like, I have, I think I just had too many uh, school years that, like, I'm just really, really just tired. Mm. And just going to school, and then, like, it's, it's just going a little bit too far for me. It's hard to succeed at something when your heart's not really in it. No. Right? So... Something else I'm sensing is maybe a lot of people are assuming that, you know, oh, the only reason that Alvin's not doing well in school is because he plays all these games or because he's smoking or whatever else. 
something else that I'm getting from you, Alvin, is that maybe it's not even something that you want to be doing at school. Right? It could be something to think about. Um, how's that sitting with you? Uh, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's like, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. I was out for the past two years when I was attending college. I didn't even know what program I was in. I just right. made the most randomest program. Yeah. And, like, I, like, again, I, I don't even know what the program's name was. Just going through the motions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I hear that a lot, Elvin, right? I mean, if people don't like what they're doing, like, more so when it comes to a job, right? If people don't like the job that they're writing, think of, like, an assembly line kind of job. If they don't want to be doing that, one thing after the other, it really does just feel like, oh, well, I'm here. I'm just going to do it. I don't really care about it. Mm -hmm. Right? But wouldn't it be awesome if you had something that made you feel alive and that gave you something passionate to think about? Right? Um, which is why, by the way, I wanted to kind of spin back to the gaming again, if you don't mind. Okay. What is it about these games that you're playing that is kind of captivating your attention? Well, I guess the graphics, the storylines, mm -hmm. the characters, and I guess their characteristics about it. And like, I guess there yeah. are times where I feel like I that I want to be them. Yeah. And get out of it, get out of reality, and like just go on yeah. a long adventure to be someone else again. Yeah. To go explore and do something exciting. Yeah. Right. Part of what I heard there too, and I want to connect this to what we were talking about in terms of making your own choices. I don't know a whole lot about these games, but it sounds like part of the game is creating someone like step by step, right? almost like molding someone into it. Of course, in real life, we don't have, you know, like dragon hunters or, yeah. you know, or we don't have like wizards or anything like that, but you're still making someone. Right, like if you're going to decide how strong they're going to be, how much they can lift. You're going to decide how intelligent they are. You're going to decide like what kind of abilities that they have. Um, is that something that captivates you? Yeah, I mean, there are times where while I was smoking, I kind of wish there was a dragon to fight. Mm -hmm. But I feel like my girlfriend is a dragon. Ah, at right, the same right. Time, so. You know, and it's just, I guess it's just so, uh, I don't know. I can't really put it in explain, to explain. Yeah. So your girlfriend being the dragon, for one thing, um, that makes her threatening. Yeah. Okay. To some degree. Maybe not life-threatening. Do um, you know what I mean by that? Or, yeah. She's yeah. a... She's not a life threat, yeah. but I guess she's more of a threat of when I can have fun. Ah, okay. So that would also make her, in many ways, an obstacle to you making free and kind of autonomous decisions about what you want to do. Okay. Um, what else about your girlfriend? Now, sticking to images here, right? So right. one way of thinking about your girlfriend is a dragon. Okay. okay. Um, and don't worry, we won't tell her that. Um, but what other image would be helpful in describing either your girlfriend or your relationship to her? Uh, I would probably say it's at this moment. It's more of a like a hard, uh, a hard battle, mm. and you know she wants something like I guess more of a glitz life or. Like, like what's uh, life? Sorry. Yeah, more like a mature. Like I don't know. I would say this. I guess me and her have a successful oh, okay. uh, yeah. uh, career. Uh, I guess she wants like say party and mm. plays and like for me, I really don't want that. Right. I just want to stay home. Yeah. I mean, I really don't want to do anything at this moment, and uh, it is like a constant battle with it and I just honestly I just would rather like just be at home mm -hmm. and just ignore it yeah yeah again like not be out in the hustle and bustle of life you don't need to be stimulated and excited all the time right so it also sounds like there might be some diverging kind of lifestyle 
um, aspirations and values between you two, right? So she might want one kind of life and you might want another one. And, um, there might be some kind of clash there. What do you think? Um, I wouldn't say a clash. It's just, mm. uh, I guess we just both have what different things that we want. Yeah, okay. Okay. So there's a lot on the table right now. Mm -hmm. And again, I just want to commend you again for having shared so much with me in so short a time. Um, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind if we just kind of step back for a second. Okay. Okay. I don't want to overwhelm you either. Right. It's the first time you talk to someone, I'm assuming, like this. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like to do is I kind of step back and kind of give you a map of everything uh, that I've been hearing you say, just in a big picture sense, okay? And once I've given you this big picture, first I want you to tell me, have I missed anything? Did I get anything wrong? Um, it's just one thing, oh no, Carl should really know that thing, or um, okay, so you can let me know that. And then once we figure that out, I want to ask you a couple of questions about it. Would that be cool? Okay. Okay. So, um, coming in here today, obviously, let's be honest, wasn't... Um, 100% your choice, and that might even be understating things a little bit. Um, the great thing, though, is that you made a decision to come in today. And speaking of which, being able to make your own decisions, being autonomous, having your own free will is a really important thing to you. Okay, That's something that, that's come up again and again, and you've been feeling a lot of pressure, right? To the point of being overwhelmed and almost kind of like pushed into kind of like withdrawing from others, right? Whether that's playing video games or whatever else, um, just as a way of coping with all of that pressure on your ability to just choose whatever the heck you want to do. And it's been going on, like not just with your girlfriend, she's not the only person involved here. You've been feeling that at school, you've been feeling it from other people in your life. People telling you what, you know, that you should be doing this, you should make up your mind, so many shoulds. <laughs> In my field, we call that people shooting all over you, right? right? It's not fun for people to shoot on you, right? Yeah. Um, all that pressure, and plus some other really difficult things that have been going on, um, especially in terms of how you and your girlfriend have been relating with each other, right? So not just some of that um, unfortunate history that you have, right, involving her friend, but also more generally how hard it's been for you guys to communicate. And that's always hard in any relationship. Um, and one big thing that I'm sensing is that um, even though there's kind of diverging lifestyle choices and values between you two, I'm still sensing that you really love this girl, right? You love the sweetheart that you fell in love with, even though things haven't been great. Um, and that whatever happens, ultimately you came here because she asked you to. And that's an amazing thing to do for someone, right? right? Of course you came here of your own free will, but you also came here because she asked you to. That takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of fidelity to another person. Um, do you think I missed anything, Alvin, from what uh, I kind of threw out there? I think, honestly, mm, no, I, I, don't, I don't think you missed it. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm going to correct myself. Because right. one big thing I missed out on is what makes the gaming so awesome for you. All right. Right. Um, of course, the gaming is not just, as you were suggesting, a way of kind of dealing with feeling pressured. A big part of that gaming comes back to what we started with. It's like kind of coming full circle. It's about being able to freely create something. Right? And we got some pretty interesting images out of that too, right? The creating someone who can overcome obstacles with certain right. abilities. And um, it's a really interesting part of any experience, right? Being able to have that kind of freedom. Um, so with all of that on the board, I want you to imagine, so right here, we're looking at nothing, all right? But I want you to use your imagination, okay? okay. Just imagine that everything I put up there okay, is actually up there. It's okay. kind of like a big map, right? right. This is Alvin's life, right, like right. 1.0. Okay, and I want you to tell me, right, based on everything we've talked about there, okay, there's absolutely no pressure, no commitment. All I want to do is get a sense of how we can best use our time together. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to pull you in any direction. I don't want to make you feel like you're being pulled in any direction. 
I just want to get a sense from you of where it is you think we should be focusing our attention. Like, what would be a good goal for us, if anything? We don't have to have a goal, but like, if you were looking at that map, what do you think would be a good goal for us? I guess, um, I guess to, honestly, I guess I would probably, my first choice would be uh, choosing, finding a career of mm. my own liking. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I love my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And yet, currently we are in a rocky relationship at this moment. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like I, she does deserve a man who can uh, give her what she wants. And right now, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably say a career at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to find myself would be the most important thing at this moment, and I, I guess I can probably try and find some way to stop smoking, but I'm still not going to stop. Mm -hmm. but I guess I just have to make sure I, to smoke less, I guess, mm -hmm. and I guess find some time with her other than playing video. Those are some great suggestions already. Uh, I wanted to start with that first one. It sounded like you're um, pretty interested in exploring at least that first step. Okay, um, so getting or at least finding a career path for yourself. And what I was able to extract from that is that there are three big reasons why finding that career path. At least initially, we can talk more about this. One is just finding something you're passionate about, right? As opposed to the tedium that you feel you've been involved in, right? Like that day in, day out, going through the motions. Right. So actually being on a career path, doing something you at least kind of want to do, hopefully a lot more than that. Yeah. Second, you want to be a provider, right? The way you put it was you want to be able to build a life, not just for her, but for both of you, right? Um, for whatever goals you guys might have in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, oh, it's got to be something that is an expression of your freedom, right? It's got to leave you with space for autonomy, right? right. For what I want to freely choose to do, right? The job is a job, obviously, but it's got to be something that doesn't leave you feeling horrible all the time, feeling like you're a slave to something. Um, does that kind of make sense in terms of choosing a career path? Yeah. I, like, I just... I don't want to be a slave. I would rather choose my own path and, mm -hmm. like, I guess you could say, be my own boss. Mm. In some way. Okay, okay. Um, and what I also liked is that even though you might not feel ready for whatever reason at this point, you know, either to stop or you know, drastically cut down the pot, mm -hmm. okay, um, you're putting it on the table as something, you know what, I, I could think about this. You know what, like this could be something I could talk about one day. And I really like that about you, Alvin. Um, it's not just the fact that you're kind of pointing towards something uh, with, with, with strong determination that you know that you want, that you're also willing to consider other things that other people have noticed in your life, even if you don't think that they're urgent issues right now. Okay, so the way I like to kind of sum this up is for now, I think one major thing that we should be focusing on is this career path, right? Like, what am I going to do with my life? While also not neglecting, not completely forgetting about this broader picture, right? Who knows? Okay, so the career path is this big guy right here. Right. And we also know that there are other things in the wings. And one of them is the pot. Right? Don't have to focus on that today, tomorrow, next month. But the fact that you've put it on the table is a sign to me that it's something you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's great. Um, does that make sense, kind of putting things together in that way? Yeah, it's helpful. And I guess after you described it, uh, it, it does help me um, get a little bit organized mm -hmm. in some way on what needs to be done, what needs. I guess not to be done, more of a, what 
what needs to change. Yeah. So I'm sensing that it's not just important to you to do this. You use the word need. That's a yeah. big word for me. Right. Right? Like, I've got to do this. Right. right. So there's more urgency, it feels like, right? So it sounds like we don't need to do a lot of convincing for you right now that this matters, right? It's important for you to do this, and it's got to get done, like, yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the idea? Like, is that going too far, or what would you say? Uh... I kind of feel like it was more of a, like, I should have done this a lot while ago, right, right. but now it's catching up, and I, I, I guess it does feel like it's a little, that I have, time's running out, mm. I'm in my 20s, and I still haven't even chosen a career, Okay. and I guess it's kind of coming back to haunt me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. something like you're not going to live forever, and um, you got to make a choice about something. You really want to do it, and you feel like you need to. It seems like a lot of those ingredients are there for telling you basically, yep, that's what I want to do, right? It really matters. The next big question, and you can take as much time as you want to think about this. I like to use, again, I'm going to go back to my imaginary board here. I want you to imagine that there's kind of like a ruler, okay? Or like, you know, uh, like measuring tape, whatever you want to think in your mind. Just a scale, okay? I want you to think... On a scale of zero, okay, where zero just means absolutely not even one little bit, okay, and ten means easy peasy, right? Don't need to think about it, okay? I want you to think not how important this is. I want you to think how confident, how confident am I that I could actually pull this off? Right? Use whatever timeline you want. Like, can I pull this off tomorrow? Next week? Can I start? Like. How able do you think, right, um, you are in making this happen? Or we know it's important. Mm-hmm. How confident are you, would you say, zero to ten? I, honestly, my confident level right now would be, I guess, a zero point five. Like mm. Steps that I'm taking, yes, I'm talking to you. Yeah. But, and it's just under, it's on a paper. I still haven't done it. And yeah. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do, mm-hmm. or what path that I'm going to be taking, it's uh, still it's in the, my comment level, it's a little bit low right now, yeah. and it's more of a in progress. Mm-hmm. So really, really low, seems yeah. almost insurmountable at this point, yeah. right? You really want to do it, it's important, but oh man, how am I going to do this thing? Yeah. Is that kind of the sense of getting from you? Yeah, after you explained it, after you drew it, I, yeah. in my head, I was like, how the fuck am I going to yeah. do this with do it? it? But then, like, before turning 30, it was like, or 25, like, yeah, I don't have that time. And then, like, it's panicking me now that I feel like I'm, like, I'm running out mm. of time. Okay, yeah. You gave me 0.5, you said, right? Yeah. So obviously, very low. This might sound like a totally silly question, Elvin, but... Why didn't you give me a flat out zero? Uh, well, for one thing, I guess even though it was my, it was not my decision to come here. I still chose to do it. Oh. I could have easily told my girlfriend, like, no, I'm not going to do it. Right. At all. So you can say, it, I guess you can say, like, he, she did help me, give me a little bit boost, but at the same time, I'm still a little bit weary. Yeah. Right, so again, coming back to choosing for yourself to come here, even if you were getting a nudge, maybe a push yeah. right, from someone else, right? And kind of more specifically, why would you say that you're not at a zero when it comes to being able to find this career that you really want? Because it seems daunting, obviously, right? Yeah. 0.5 is still a very, very, very low number, but why would you say it's not completely flat line zero impossible? Um, because for one thing, I guess, uh, even though me and my girlfriend still have like a bit of a rock, rocky year right now, it's, I still love her and I mm-hmm. want to, uh, still give her the benefit of doubt that it will work. Um, mm-hmm. Like also the main reason why I was here is because she gave me an ultimatum that if I don't uh, come to your uh, program or whatever, and she would leave me. So I mm-hmm. basically 
told her I'll think about it, and because I love her, I chose to come. Yeah, and love can be a pretty strong motivator. It yeah. sounds like. Eh? Yeah, yeah. You're not the only one who's motivated by something like that, right? Okay. Um, so, the other question I wanted to ask you, still, still thinking about this imaginary ruler, okay? Right. What do you think it would take for us to get not to a ten? That's far off in the future. Hopefully, not too far off. But what would it take to even get you to like a three or a four? Three or four? Yeah, oh. just like a few steps up. Oh. I was imagining that you're building up a character in the game. We're like, what would it take for you to get that character up to level four? I guess uh, researching a career that I would love. Oh. I guess. Okay. That would that would reach me to. See a three and going to a four to a five would be the applying to our program. Sure. Yeah. And I guess that would work out. And then uh, I guess in order to get me to say a six would be um, finding ways to uh, yes. Not stop smoking, but more of a choosing what to smoke, and I guess I guess I think that's about it. I think that's a, that's right now what I'm thinking. Wow, um, that's really jumping ahead. That's awesome. Those are some great ideas. Um, so researching was the first one that you said, yeah. right? So just kind of looking out there, like, what is there out there for me? That also involves a bit of soul searching, too. Like, what do I really want to do? Not what does my girlfriend want, what do my parents, anyone else, what do I want to do? What does Alvin want to do? Right. I also like that second step that you mentioned, right, about just getting yourself out there. That could be applying, right? But it sounds like you're at least willing to just kind of put yourself out into the world once you figure out what you want to do. And... Uh, there was this third thing that you mentioned. I'm so sorry, it's escaping me. Uh, so you mentioned researching. Um, you mentioned kind of getting yourself out there and applying yourself. Um, there was something else I might have missed there. Uh, oh yeah, it's uh, fixing my relationship. Ah, right. So kind of associated kind of lifestyle or life issues, yeah. right? Because sometimes, I mean, as it sounds like to me, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes what kind of keeps us at a really lower part of the scale here is not just the problem itself, it's not our abilities, right. it's more other stuff that's kind of getting in our way, right? Mm -hmm. And not because anyone's getting in our way necessarily, it's more just obstacles that once we clear them can nudge us a little more along towards feeling more confident. Does that kind of make sense to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, as of right now, I, I, I really don't even have the confidence to tell her about the affair because, well, for one thing, like, uh, well, we currently have a bad communication and mm. we've been constantly fighting. And I think, if, I feel like maybe right now is not the time. Maybe mm -hmm. finding uh, my own path should be is my first priority mm -hmm. and you know maybe I know a lot of people said that you're gonna put your relationship last but I think it's I guess it's more I just have to do this and I can't have a relationship being first all the time mm -hmm. absolutely Alvin and I'm also kind of here I don't want to kind of put words in your mouth but one thing I'm really sensing from you is since you love her so much, you want to be able to love her with everything that you've got and the strongest you that you could provide for her. And it's hard to do that if you don't do some work on you first, yeah. right? Um, so I, I really love how you put that. How like, can you know there's some associated stuff you can work on to increase your confidence, but you know what? There's some other stuff that I can do right here first, mm -hmm. and that could build me up. Right? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm really liking. First, not just the fact that you've established a really clear path and something you want to point towards. Um, I also like all these ideas you're coming with, and I don't want to move too far ahead. So I just wanted to 
take a quick stock of kind of like the bigger picture of everything we've been talking about. And, and again, stop me at any time if you think that I missed something or that uh, there's something crucial that needs to be added in, okay? Um, so all of this started today, right? Um, it seems like with you kind of not being sure about whether you wanted to come here today. In fact, you might have just been against it. Right. You kind of got nudged and pushed into coming here today from your girlfriend. She's really been concerned um, about some of the stuff that you're up to, right? Yeah. Um, so we talked about gaming. We talked about smoking pot. And you also mentioned, you know, like some possible um, eating stuff right yeah. late at night. And another big one was about school and about trying to just find something to do with your life. Yeah. Um, ultimately, we came to a realization that all of this pressure from other people, it's not helping you, right? No. I mean, like, at best, what you're doing with that pressure is you're finding ways to relieve it in ways that you don't really think are awesome, right? So whether that's just kind of retreating to your own world or to the world of the game um, or smoking more pot, whatever it is, I mean, it sounds like you're not... Um, for one thing, you're not enjoying all this pressure and you're not down with having to deal with it in all those different ways. Right. Um, one big theme that emerged, well, a few different things emerged for us, but one big theme that came up for us had to do with just finding the best way to exercise your autonomy and your free will, mm -hmm. finding a career path. Like the big thing that you want to do, not just for you, but because you love your girlfriend so much, so I keep calling her your girlfriend. What's your name, Ellen? Uh, her name is uh, Emily. Emily. <laughs> Sorry, I, I lost space. <laughs> Don't worry. We've been talking about so much today. Um, you really love Emily. Okay? okay. And part of how much you love her involves wanting to provide a life for both of you, right? Especially for her and for giving her the best version of you, mm -hmm. right? Now, we also figured out that this is super important. You need to do it, or at least you feel like you need to do it, but we're not that confident yet. And right. That's okay. A lot of people start their goals that way, right? Like, I know I need to go to the gym, Alan, but am I confident that I can stick with it five days a week? Nope. No. Right? Sounds like you're in a similar position here, and our job, if you think this is something that we can do with each other, and again, if you don't want to, mm -hmm. it's totally up to you, our job might be to keep nudging you a little bit across this scale, right? To give you some tools, to give you more power to build your own real life character, to become more confident, right? to do something that you really want to do. And I just threw a lot at you there. Um, how is that sitting with you? Uh, <coughs> a bit nervous, afraid. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and like, uh, I guess I'm happy, but mm -hmm. like, it did help me release some of my uh, frustration okay. uh, meeting up with you, so it's, yeah. it's a start. Absolutely. I'm glad you acknowledged that, by the way, both sides, mm -hmm. right? On the one hand, you know, okay, great, like, this, this is nice, I get to talk about things, I'm, uh, I'm getting a bit of a boost in my self-esteem and confidence, but this is still really new, kind of still weirded out by this process. Um, so, one more time, Alvin, I just wanted to really commend you, okay, for not just the courage, okay, but um, the open-mindedness that you've had today, to, to, to tell all of this stuff to someone that you've just met, um, and to be um, so forthcoming about it, so willing to explore um, how you think and how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. so, so I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so again, coming back to this, um, I want to put this completely in your lap. Um, right. How do you feel about the possibility of us continuing to talk about these kinds of things, moving along this scale? Uh, I think uh, I think I, I can probably meet up with you as as long as my as long as Emily doesn't know what I'm talking about to you, mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. Well, if it helps ease your mind, she will have absolutely no knowledge about what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Again, just barring um, 
those conditions that are set place and confidentiality, the ones I talked to you about, but Emily wouldn't be the person that I would go to if I had to break confidentiality, okay? So just so you know, she'll never know anything we talk about unless you yourself, again, coming back to the big central theme, make that decision to bring her in, okay? But for my part, um, this is a great start between us, and I really hope that we can continue talking with each other. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so before we end off here today, Alvin, do you have any questions at all about what went down? Uh, no, I think I'm pretty much good. I think you laid it all out. Okay. Um, I guess talking with you just kind of, I guess it helped me get rid of some of the weight of out of my shoulder. Mm. Right. So feeling a little lighter? <laughs> yeah, that feels yeah. like it. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, if that's the one thing I accomplished any time I met someone, I'd be happy. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'd be happy to meet with you next week. Okay. Okay. And if anything changes, just uh, let me know. All right. Cool. All right. Great meeting you, Alan. Great. Same to you.